we got so much stuff. Which, did I even mention? Do you know how much we paid? No. We paid a lot of money. Like, our grand total? It was like 200 something. Probably right. We, we topped $300. Did we really? Yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifty. This is Mid-Century Wasted. Hello everyone, welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie and... I'm Blake. Blake's here. Hello. Today, we're doing a haul video for you about the stuff that we got at the Long Beach flea market. Our very first time ever at the flea market. At that flea market, I should say. So what'd you think? That was good. I loved it. It was fun. It was not hot that day. Okay, so <laughs> he's pulling the curtain back for you guys. It is actually like a month later and we've been to the flea market again a second time. So we're trying to remember what was good the first time. <laughs> and yes, the weather was great. Spoiler alert, it was not great. The second time. A couple days ago when we went. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really, really fun. Yeah, it was full of people. The line to get in was long. We got there late a little bit, though. We were there a little a little late. Um, what, like 9-ish, I think? Something like that? 9.30, yeah, 8.30, 9.30? So. 9.30. That was a learning experience, for sure. But it was... The only other flea market we had been to before was the Palm Springs one. We thought that was amazing, and it was, just for the quality of stuff that was there. This one was also very amazing for completely different reasons. It was huge. Just, what do they say, four or five hundred different vendors? Something like that. It was gigantic. Yeah, it was pretty big. Hundreds and hundreds of vendors. We did not see the whole thing. We tapped out around noon because we had to get home to pick up our kids and he was hungry. And thirsty. And thirsty. <laughs> we didn't bring snacks. <laughs> we learned a lot this first time. We'll just put it that way. We didn't know what to expect um, either. We're going to show you what we got and kind of talk about what we paid for it if we can remember. Which I think we can. We got it. I think I got it all down. Um, so anyway, the first thing that I found was this. And this to me kind of just started everything off on a really good note. You don't have to lean over yet. <laughs> I told him to like do this when I show something so that the camera focuses on the object, not on his face. So <laughs> he just doesn't want to he doesn't want to be on like camera anymore. Anyway, it's Whoosh. a new camera by the way. Let me know in the comments below if we look a little more crisp. But I'm still also kind of figuring out how to use it to be honest. So, here's the thing where that everybody like puts their hand behind stuff and like covers up their face to focus <laughs> on something. Anyway, so when I found this beautiful needlepoint of these birdies, I was very smitten with it. This is something that's just going to go into my own collection. Uh, I have a collection of needlepoints hung up in my office and I'm going to add this to it. And this was $15. It's got kind of a nice frame. It's an older frame and I like that. It's not in perfect condition or anything, but I just thought it was really pretty. It was That's $15 nice. and it was a good way to kick off this whole adventure. I thought it was a, I don't know, a good omen in a way that uh, we'd be finding some cool stuff because that's like right up my alley. All right, the next booth that I bought something from, I was drawn to that space because of Pyrex and there was some mid-century like pebble art of roosters or something like that. So the first thing I asked about was this butterfly gold Pyrex butter dish. Ta-da. And this is something that I'm adding to my collection. I swear I bought stuff to resell too. I promise I did. I paid $10 for this and he kind of just bundled everything together with this other stuff I'm gonna show you spent $30 at this booth. So I know some people um, hear flea market and think like digging through boxes and paying like a nickel for stuff, but that's not really, no, that's, different. that's what around here we would call that a swap meet where people bring just, um, they buy 
uh, storage units and stuff and then they just try to sell everything at the swap meet. That's more of what I think other parts of the country they call that a flea market. This was definitely, technically this wasn't even called the flea market. This was called the Long Beach Antique Market. Yeah. So it is more of a curated experience where you're going to be I'm not gonna be buying things for a dollar. It's not like a yard sale or yard sale prices. So keep that in mind. So the other thing I got for the $30 in this place, in this space, here, Blake, you can hold one. Oh. Blake, do you know what that is? It's a torture device. It could be. Play, you, you play with Play-Doh with it? Play-Doh? I'm just kidding. Jesus, are you mad at our kids? No. <laughs> there you go. This is the biggest flower frog I think I've ever seen. How do I even get it out without killing myself? Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, it hurts. Can you hold yours up? Cover your face. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ah. So, um. So what do you do with these things? So these are flower frogs. I don't see frogs. <laughs> I don't know why they call it flower frogs. I don't know where the frog comes from. Um, so there's those two, and then this smaller one. So what do you do? You can tell. What does it have to do with flowers? Hang on. What does it have to do with flowers, or what does it have to do with frogs? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you would put it in a bowl, or a vase, or something, and then the flowers, it's for flower arranging. You take the stems of the flowers, you know, and you jam them in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. What? I feel like there would be a better way to do it than sharp things. Well, and then there's also this kind. Oh. See where they go in. What about like the what about like the green mesh where they we're, like... we're talking a long time ago. Oh yeah, they would pre flower it. foam. You know what I mean? So they just jammed it into it. They would be like um not like in a vase even, these metal ones. It'd be like in a shallow dish. Oh. You know what I mean? That's strange. But See, that's, that's the only way to do people it. People don't really use them for that anymore. They, that's not why you buy them. People use them for decor. And you set them in a display, and then you can put papers in it. Oh, okay. Like you have a postcard or something. Yeah, it's way Stick it in there, the and, away, it, and it over. holds things up. You know. No, that makes sense. Well, that's better use for it. <laughs> yeah. So he threw this one in too as a little just bonus extra. I didn't even see this one. He just handed it to me and said, "Here, take this one too." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, but these ones. I mean, what do you think this is like? Three inches by five inches, maybe. Yeah. It's like a three by five card size, and these must weigh probably weigh a couple pounds. Four, four pounds. Yeah, these are heavy. I don't know. I might. I've never decorated with a flower frog before, to be honest with you. It's just something that I see people buy. I see people go crazy for them, and I saw these gigantic ones, and I thought I'm I'm now testing out flower frogs. People so go crazy for these, huh? They really do. I don't see it, but hey. Well, whatever. He's not a decorator. I'm truly not. And I've just never seen ones this gigantic before. I mean, I feel like this, this is common and even like half the size is common. So anyway, I thought that was a good deal. I feel like I've seen flower frogs go for $30 and I got all of that for $30. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see about that. Now is a good time to mention if you see anything in this video that I don't say that I'm keeping, it means that I'm selling it and I sell on eBay and Etsy, but I'm very slow at listing things because I'm very busy. <laughs> so if there's anything you see here, just go ahead and send me an email if it's something you're interested in because that's a much easier way to purchase from me rather than waiting 10 years for me to finally list it on eBay. And I'll give you a good price too because I don't have to pay eBay or Etsy fees that way. So there you go. <laughs> the papers were next. Blake, do you want to show a record? I can't. You want? Yeah. Slip in a record there, Blake. Which one do you want me to... Well, well which which group of records did you buy first? Uh, or what thing did you buy first? Okay. I went to a guy. He had all records. He saw a guy. He knew a guy. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> <laughs> So I picked up a couple of Eric Clapton's. No reason to cry. It is from... What year has it come out? I think it's the late 80s. No, excuse me. 1976. It's a bit off. Um, it's not his best. Late 70s. Mid 70s. It's not his best, you know, but it, it's something I didn't have already. And so I was you like. You did have already? No, I didn't have oh, yet. Oh. Um, so I just 
And I honestly, I hadn't seen it. So I just grabbed it. And it's okay. What did you pay for it? Uh, well, I'll tell you after I'm done going to the rest of them. I also got this other Eric Clapton. August. That one was later, right? It was in, it was, yeah, it was, uh, I'll tell you in a second. Let me see. Try not to be awkward about this. 1986. 1986. 86? Yeah. Uh, also, you know, not his best, very 80s, but he's still talented, so it's not like, you know, it's terrible, but... What is his best? Oh, Slow he, Hands. You keep saying it's not his best, so what is his best? Well, he's got tons of albums. Slow Hands good, Ocean Boulevard's good. Do you have those? Uh, yeah, I have those. Those are great. So he already uh, has the good stuff, the now he's collecting the crap. The Unplugged is really good, too. I also got this. Aerosmith, Night in the Ruts. This is a good one. Pivotal point in the band where everybody's really pissed off at each other, they're doing a lot of drugs, and their band was about to break up. So, it's good stuff. And I got all three of these, I got these for 20 bucks. So that makes makes for good music when the band is in turmoil? Yeah, when everybody's upset, that's when this well, best that's true, stuff that's is made. that's when the best Beatles album came out. I mean, Pink Floyd Abbey did Road. the wall when everybody, you know, Roger Waters couldn't stand anybody in the band. That's interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. And it was the last studio the album they made it, together. Really well, is. no it wasn't. But it was close to it. Well. All right, so what'd you pay for that? Did you say? 20 bucks for these three. Okay. It's kind of a little bit, a lot, but whatever. I like records. Okay, then. Records cost a lot now, I, unfortunately. I know you like records. <clears throat> we all know that Blake likes records. Okay, the next place that I stopped at was a place that had a big table filled with little packages of papers. And so my little, like, tingly, oh, tingly senses were firing. I remember this one. This contains one of my favorite things that I purchased. Maybe actually my favorite thing, which is bizarre because it's like the cheapest thing that I buy. But we'll start with the Halloween cat. It's all <laughs> folded up here. I feel like you can find this stuff in a retiring teacher's classroom. <laughs> you probably could. So keep an eye out at school. Whoever's I feel like retiring, that's the, all this stuff was in my all my teacher's classrooms in, in elementary school. These probably definitely were <laughs> these things. So anyway, this probably was... Probably beat up though. This was $10. See the price right there? And I mean, they're they're from an antique mall. Grandma Darling's Antique Mall. I don't know, even know where that is. Wanna look it up? So I don't know, no, <laughs> not right now. I don't know if this person also sells there, used to sell there, currently sells there, what the deal is. I didn't ask because I didn't think about it until I was home and I'm like, oh, there's an antique mall sticker on all these. But anyway, here's the cat. It's such a good shape. It is in good shape. And it I think it's, like it's never been I used. don't think it's one of the really, really early ones but i'm not an expert on these this is the bisel bistel everybody is always it? is confused about how to say that but i i look at it and i see, I see bistel so yeah bistel yeah bistel or bistel bistel sounds better i don't know bistel <laughs> bistel it's probably german or something but it's french fragile <laughs> but yeah this was ten dollars which might be a lot. Sounds like a lot. It would be a lot <laughs> to resell it. But I think they probably go for about that on eBay. And that sounds about right. Yeah. And this is for me. Have I mentioned anything that I'm actually selling it? Or did I only get stuff for me? Honestly, you know, there are there are things that I can sell that I got, but for the most part, this was kind of just a let's go there and see what what they've got kind of a trip and I ended up getting a lot of stuff for myself. Something wrong with paying for things that you want for yourself. Well gosh I mean every Halloween I look up those things and I'm tempted to buy them so mm. might as well buy it now when I see it. <clears throat> uh, okay this piece of paper also from the antique mall was five dollars and it's a marine specialty company incorporated uh, mini calendar like one of those little things that they would hand out at a store. A marine shop apparently and it's from base. ocean boulevard long beach i don't oh, know yeah. if you noticed that and the date on the calendar is may 1948. well there used to be a, cool. uh, a naval base yes, there and my school where i teach now before it was there it was naval housing oh all over there oh, so, oh yeah before it's built all the up against the long uh the la the oil uh, refinery the oil refinery <laughs> and then the la the port of la oh yeah port of, okay. port of los angeles um, so anyway, here it is. That thing is in such nice shape. It is in such good shape. It must have been in a book or and something. And it's got this 
adorable pinup girl on it. I mean, that's definitely eye-catching. You know, I haven't even taken this out yet. Let's take it out. I bet it was in like a book or something. This is only it's five only bucks. One, it's only one, only one way. It could you be know, some shape. people just have like just get stuffed in like an encyclopedia or something. Of stuff. No, some people just keep everything, and when it's just all tucked away and not looked at, it stays in good shape. Yeah, that's true. The stuff that's out and being used is the stuff that. It's just a card, gets right? Up. Yeah, it's just a card. Oh, it's stuck to something, so it's on a. No, it's just. Oh, that's part of it. It's mount. You know, it's like. A printed paper that's been mounted on a board to hand out. Oh, people. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's one part of it. Yeah, yeah that's nice. But it's it is in really good shape. It's crazy. The year. It said it was printed in St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh. But it was for a company City. here. Look at the look at the phone number on it. Six nine seven oh seven. That's it. <laughs> you see that down at the bottom by my thumb, kind of. <laughs> but you know, it was the pinup girl graphics that caught my eye, obviously. And then I saw the date, and this was $5, so I grabbed it. But sometimes things with dates on it, uh, people are looking... Sure. Some people look for certain dates of things on eBay. Like, I know I'm usually looking for magazines for people, um, like the month and the year that somebody was born. So, you know, if somebody was born May 1958, they might want that, to, to give that to somebody for their birthday, or, you know, something like that. Especially when it comes to, like, a milestone year. I feel like people are looking for things that have that year on it. That's cool. Yeah, that was five dollars, and actually, th this is sixteen dollars worth of stuff, and she gave it to me for fifteen. So, so this this is great. Arguably, is my favorite thing that I got out of everything, which is funny because it's just a flimsy little piece of paper. But Katie will appreciate this. Katie will. Yeah. Katie Vintage and Vinyl <laughs> will like this too, and and Misty and anyone else with an aluminum Christmas tree. This is how to decorate your new aluminum Christmas tree. <laughs> and I mean, the, obviously the graphics on the front caught me at first, and then I saw it was about an aluminum Christmas tree and I about fell over. <laughs> I could not run up there and buy this quick enough. I think I made an audible like <gasps> sound or something like that during the video. So oh. I was very excited about this. So the graphics, are amazing and it actually does have like tips and tricks on how to to decorate one of these I got a tip don't put lights on it um, I think it does say that because <laughs> look here's some do's and don'ts on this page don't. don't put anything electrical on it you will burn your house down since we have two aluminum Christmas trees I absolutely had to buy this and I'll display it right next to our aluminum Christmas tree Just at Christmas in the tree. so I gave the person $15 for all of that and then as I was kind of walking away I noticed she had other stuff other than just paper and so I was checking all that stuff out and I don't think I caught it on camera but I found this no, that's cool. this little guy so this is this was five dollars which was funny because I gave her a 20 she gave me five dollars back and then I walked right back over to her and I gave her that five dollars right back and I said I'm buying this too so <laughs> I I could have just saved us the transaction if I had just looked looked around a little bit more. But anyway, this is the, I believe it's the Star Glow is the name of this pattern. But if I'm wrong, I'll just type it in there later. I have a, a plate, yeah. or two plates, a dinner plate and a salad plate, I think, and then a pie plate of this. And I don't really see this very often at all. It's got the gold, why does it take so long? There we go. It's got the gold starbursts on it. And this picture is in really good shape. I mean, it's dirty inside, as this you can a cream, see. Right? Yes, it's cream a little it. creamer. Right. I keep calling it a pitcher, but, and it is, but it's a creamer. Um, yeah, and I just, I never find this pattern. And I like putting this out at Christmas. So this will be cool. added to my collection. Am I reselling any of this stuff? Super cool. Okay, so the next little spot that I bought stuff from. Uh, you might have seen me kind of examining these in the video. And then I went over and asked the guy how much they cost. And they were a lot of money. And then I didn't show if I bought them or not. And I did, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so this was my big ticket item that I bought for the day. And you will sell these. I'm gonna try. <laughs> 
Uh, hey, we found something here to sell. Look, I've seen stuff like this go for big bucks, and I have not been able to find the, these exact ones. So I don't really know exactly which ones these are. And I paid $40 for these. That's right, four zero. I'm hoping I can double my money. That's the hope here. Maybe not, but I'm taking kind of a calculated risk in it. Um, it does say something on the bottom, but I cannot for the life of me make out it? what that says. Let's see that one. Here. I can make out the numbers, but I can't make out. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll be able to. Let's see that one again. Maybe I'll be maybe able to easier. tell if it's on camera. Look, it's getting darker and focusing, so maybe that'll we'll be able to tell. But anyway, they're marked on the bottom. The thing that really sold me on these, obviously the shape of them is just unbelievable. Is this is a Mar, Jamar, J-E-M-A-R, something like that. Lamar? It says L -A M A R. I think, I believe that's the last three letters. Lamar maybe? Now the first letter could be a J. It's like an L on oh, mine. It doesn't look like a J at all. That one, very hard to tell. Yeah. That one's hard to tell. This one's a little bit easier to make out, but you know, your guess is a Who good knows? One. Anyway, the thing that really sold me on these is they're in absolutely perfect condition. There's not a crack, not a chip, not a anything. I mean, there's, you know, the very slight pottery kind of imperfections that are in all kinds of pottery, but there's no damage at all on these. And the kind of pattern down here at the bottom almost looks like a holly or a ribbon or something and I feel like these would be really really cool at Christmas time. Not that I really want to hang on to them for that long but I feel like I mean they're white though you could put them out all year long obviously but you know tape a little tiny Santa hat to it and it's perfect for, for Christmas. What is it anyway? Uh, a gazelle? A deer? I called it a deer. I said how much were you, are your deer but I was like no nah, I think they're more like gazelles just because of the, the horns like yeah. the antlers. Um, I think people call gazelles ibex too. I think that's another, depending on the country they're from or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, these were the big ticket items. These were my risky paying up purchase. We'll see if I can. Probably, if you think they go for a lot, you think you'll be able to sell them? For I mean, I feel for? like because it's a pair, I mean, that's better than just finding a single. They're in perfect condition. They're white. They go with all decor styles and I mean they're immaculate so they're pretty nice I feel like I could get a hundred bucks for them but we'll see good luck we'll see I think you'll, the, think you'll like it you know these are my they're test, a nice shape they're my test I items I couldn't see anything wrong with it Blake's gonna talk now I'll talk about it. <laughs> so maybe a few months ago I, I found a cassette player a vintage cassette player that I'll show you eventually when we do a home stereo tour but Eventually. So I kind of had an eye out for tapes. You know, you can find them at yard sales. And I've been looking and I have found some other ones. But got some tapes here. I picked up a couple. Uh, We're talking 80s cassette tapes. Yeah. White Just Snake. So you know. Because apparently those are cool again. You gotta get closer. <clears throat> they're, I mean, they're like the cases are cracked. Sure are. I just, you know, I look at the tape inside. The tape inside is good. <laughs> if, if, if the cassette inside is fine, then it is, it's good. You know, Here we case go. isn't that big deal. This is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> there you go. White snake. Two white snake. A slip of the tongue. And then I got the, um, I think it's their self-title album. This might, I don't know if this will get taken off on your... Uh, you thing. got covered the boobies with your okay. finger. I didn't know you got that. So Blind Faith, Blind Faith was a super, super band. I think it had uh, Eric Clapton, uh, Steve Winwood. And I'm um, covering the boobs that are on the front of this. It had Steve Winwood, Eric Clapton. I think it had Ginger Baker from Cream. With I played with Eric Clapton, and they had this just cover. It's like a 13 year old girl, and she's got no top. That's on. a 13 year old girl. Yeah, that's, a, that's oh, crazy. That's sick. It is kind of sick, but uh, you know, I don't know why they did. I don't know what the deal was, but they uh, their reissue album on vinyl. I have it. And it's just the band on that cover. Yeah. That's okay. What they should have done so, from the beginning. Well, I don't know. You know. It hurts. <laughs> so yeah, and then the last two two cassettes I got were REM, Fables of the Reconstruction, and then Document. So both REM cassettes. 
uh, document and fables of the reconstruction both 90s tapes these are really plentiful uh, probably really easy to find um, and they sound great so I think I so got tapes all the sound tapes because that sound great you know I'm surprised very surprised with how they sounded when I put them on my system it was great so it has more to do with maybe in the well, 80s the systems got worse well yeah, that's 100% true yeah oh. um, you know. Because everyone talks about how the tapes sounded, you know, bad. Well, maybe they sounded and bad CDs on, came along on and your little Walkman, like, oh. you know. But yeah. tape holds a lot of information. It didn't sound too bad. So I was pretty pleasantly surprised with the quality of, of how they sounded. But, you know, it's kind of like, I'm not really into tapes. I don't even have a place for them. I just kind of, they're stacked right there. And, you know, I'll buy stuff. And then, you know, they're still pretty affordable and cheap, too. So, yeah. Well, good, since records are so expensive. It's true. So, the next stuff I got were actually um, a couple of brooches. And I did really well with brooches this trip. Like, fabulous. <laughs> and these were both $2.50 each, which is just wow. insane. Let's see if I can even... Brooches are big. You've been doing a lot of brooches lately. Well... Everybody's been talking about we're brooches. We're bringing back the brooch. <laughs> hashtag bring back the brooch. Is that a real hashtag? It's, we made it one. Oh, really? Bring back the brooch. Starting a movement. Yeah. I should be wearing a brooch right now, but I'm not because this is basically a pajama party right now because it's late at night <laughs> and we're about to go to bed after this. <laughs> so I didn't get all dolled up for you. Sorry. You're lucky you're getting a haul at all. <laughs> um, so anyway, $2.50. There we go. Can you tell what this is? Do you see those? I know. I know. I know. It's a couple of crabs. And they're adorable. They are like a gold tone with some red and green rhinestones. I don't think it's marked on the back, um, but it's in really good shape. It's not missing any rhinestones or anything. And I mean, A plus for cuteness. As seen on Deadliest Catch. On that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I might end up keeping that one. Is that a keeper? I don't know. It's so hard because they're so cute. I can't keep every brooch that I like. I just can't. And then this one was also $2.50. If you keep all the brooches, you have to wear them all at once. Oh God, well that wouldn't look good. <laughs> and it's a fishy. <coughs> Can you see that? Yeah, there's the fishy right there. It's got a little shivery blue and some rhinestones on it. And it's just a very interesting shape. So I liked that Is one it? a lot. And I got a lot more brooches and that'll that be in the next is, part. That's cool. The next thing, which is also amazing, Santa oh, wow. Needlepoint. This one's unframed, unstretched. It's like somebody just finished it and was like, cool, I finished it. Now I'm going to throw it in a pile and be done with it. <laughs> so that was $10, but I think it's worth like well more than that. If you frame this up, this is like a how shining you, how piece. How do you make something like that? Is it like a stencil? Where you can follow a... Yeah, there's kits. Oh, okay. There's kits and... I mean, sometimes people are just good and just do it by hand. But this one's interesting because there's some, like, thinner threads for, like, the fine detail of his face. And then the beard and the rest of it is, like, a thicker thread. It's going to be my retirement gig. Needle pointing? No. Being Santa. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what? You're going to make needle points no, for retirement? Needle like, points. good luck with that, Blake. Um, yeah, well, yeah, you're going to be Santa. You spray paint the beard white right now. You can be him tomorrow. Oh, look at it. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. it's really nice. I think That's it's pretty cool. well worth the $10. Framed, it would look amazing in somebody's Christmas decorations. It would look amazing in my Christmas decorations. But I'll probably end up selling that as much as I like it. Spitting image, Blake. Spitting image. It's cool. All right. So the next place I stopped at, I got this beauty. Ooh. And this space, I, I almost get the feeling that it was someone selling their own personal collection of things because it was kind of a much older woman and maybe her daughter. Nothing was really priced. It was kind of just the older lady was just sort of on the fly pricing things. Go ahead. Now Penny wants to be in the video. 
my cat. Go ahead. I, I rescued you. It was me. <laughs> he didn't even want you. Anyway, when I was asking about this, they were like, oh, that's from the 50s. And I was like, <laughs> I know. Um, but the, it was just the way they said it. It was like, oh, I've had that since the 50s. That's kind of what it seemed like to me. So you may have seen in the shopping video, it is a Lazy Susan. It rotates. These, I'm trying not to break it. It's rattling right now. These come out. The individual little bowls come out. Now, I don't think it was marked on the bottom at all. Not that I saw, but it's in perfect condition. And I paid $15 for it. Wow, 15 bucks? Yeah, That's it's a good incredible. deal, right? I mean, I think it was 15 bucks just for the carrying thing or the. The Lazy Susan? Yeah. Well, that is? Oh. that's the part that's usually missing, honestly. I see these, the dishes, you kind of see those a lot. Mm hmm. And maybe there'll be one missing because one of them fell out and broke and then the the wire metal thing is missing too. I mean, you don't normally see them all together and in really good shape like this. So this was an easy purchase for me. And I don't know if it's picking up on the, the color. Uh, there, was good. there we go. So it's like a very like lime green on the glaze with like a dark Kelly green dripping down drip glaze. And yeah, I I just, awesome. I think it's beautiful. You even say that the, like, you know, on the chip and dip sets, like the bracket, oh, okay. Oh my God, you're covered in here. I know, yeah. The cat, uh, the cat. The cat? The brackets are like, the, you know, the hardest things to find for the oh, chip, on and the chip and dip. Oh, the chip and It's like kind of the same thing, right? Uh, sure, yeah. yeah. And because all the pieces, they get separated over the years. You know, people move, one thing goes in one box, one thing goes in another box, they get separated, one thing breaks. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. hard to keep dishes with lots of individual parts. It's hard to keep it all together. The next guy that I went to, the first thing I saw was this. Mm. Here we are again with some more deer. <laughs> and this is pink. I like pink. Yeah, it's it's 50s pink. I mean, and it's got a deer down there. It's got one standing. It's got the very mid-century shape to it. And um, he said $8. And I was like, what? Thinking bargain of the century. And it was, but it's because it has a chip, a chip. right there on the back of the ear. So... I hemmed and hawed about it and I put it back down and I was just like, eh, it is marked. It's something Los Angeles, but it's like stamped on with like a rubber stamp. It might not be the original maker mark. It might just be a stamp of like somebody who's selling it in an antique mall or something. So, so I was like, uh, you know, if it was turquoise, maybe I would get it and I would just keep it for myself, you know? And so I put it back down. It's badly chipped and it looks like somebody tried to like touch it up with paint too. So, oh, yeah, but here's the thing. You can't notice it from the front. It's completely on the back. I mean, maybe a little bit on the top, a little bit if you're really looking for it, but it's this back ear here. And I mean, it's just really, really not noticeable, but yeah, I, I wasn't going to get it. And then, and then I saw the fairy lamp, my very first, ever fairy lamp. I've said lots of times when I see Misty and Jeffrey selling these, I never find fairy lamps. I have never found a fairy lamp until now. And I believe this was, oh, I looked it up. I think it was Home Co brand. I don't remember, but I asked how much do you want for it? And he said 15, but at first I thought he said 50. And I was just thinking like, no, yeah. Oh well, <laughs> it's 50, but not like 50, what? Because mm -hmm. I mean, you should see what some those some of these people on the life sell these imagine. things for. So basically what that tells me is there are people out there that go absolutely crazy for these fairy lamps. And I just thought it'd be nice to experience one for myself. Um, so then he was like, he corrected me, he said, no, one five, 15. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to buy that for sure. <laughs> Um, because I wasn't thinking anything of it when I thought he was saying 50. So 15 is way better than 50. 
Oh, of course I wouldn't have bought it if it was 50. So what did you put a candle in it? You put a little tea light hair candle in it. Oh. Yeah, but some people also put just like those little um, strand lights, mm -hmm. you know, little battery operated ones, yeah. kind of like what we had back here at Christmas time. Right, right. And put those in there or the little um, LED flickering fake candles. Mm -hmm. Since I was 15, I asked him if I could have this for five. You know, just give him a $20 bill. And he said, yeah. So I got yes. both pieces for $20. So I will be selling the deer. It is damaged, so I'll sell it for, you know, way less than what it would be worth if it wasn't damaged. But still, I got it for five bucks, or I got it for free, and I got that for twenty. However you wanna, <laughs> however you wanna look at it, averaging it out, I'll still be able to make some money on this because it's still that really good pink, and the shape, and it's deer. I mean, you know, everybody, it's deer. everybody loves because it's deer. Everybody loves the deer. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. We love the deer, dear. So, because Sorry. we got so much stuff, which did I even mention? Do you know how much we paid? No. We paid a lot of money. Like our grand total? It was like 200 something. Probably right. We, we topped $300. Did we really? Yeah. Holy smokes. And there's still a lot more to go. So, this is going to be a two parter. Last time Blake and I did a haul, it was a fraction of this amount of stuff and it was an hour long video. This is probably an hour long video right now. Actually, we really only got through like that first shopping video. This is all the stuff we got in that first shopping video. I'm, I'm actually Good cutting way. it off at the right time here. So we'll show you what we got in shopping videos two and three in the haul video part two. Is that confusing enough? No. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that when we post the next part of this video, you won't miss it and see what else we got at the Long Beach Flea Market. Thanks for watching. Bye.